Right, in the movie Lawrence of Arabia, we see that T.E. Lawrence prefers to put out matches by pinching it between his finger and his thumb. When his colleague William Parker tries to do the same thing, he burns himself and he's confused and he asks Lawrence how he does the trick, to which Lawrence just smiles and responds, the trick is not minding that it hurts. When I saw this scene in the movie, I was really fascinated for a number of reasons. You know, one, you don't really know how he's doing the trick, but two, you know, you're kind of fascinated that he's okay with the pain. And that's what I want to talk about. It's this phenomenon of fascination. Fascination is one of the most powerful persuasive forces in the world. It's probably the most powerful one. It's a force that keeps people listening to you, and it keeps them away from their phones and distractions. And I'll, I want to talk about the things in this world that build fascination, and, you know, and some people call them tricks. There are a lot of different things that trigger fascination in an object or an idea or a person. So the first one I want to talk about is lust. Um, lust is basically just igniting desire in somebody. Marilyn Monroe was amazing at igniting lust in people, or if you want to say passion. And the way she did this was by making her conversations and when she spoke to people, she made it seem like it was a very intimate interaction. And she did this by basically making it seem like you were talking to her from across a pillow. She had this very wet, desirable quality in her voice that made it seem like you were very intimately connected with her. And that made her fascinating. Another really, really powerful force that triggers fascination is power. You know, power, this is Power Man 5000, it's not that relevant, but power is basically when you have the definitive answer to a problem, when you can show people the way to get to their goal. And you know, there's no doubt about it, there's no if, answer, once about it, you have the power. One of the greatest people at igniting power was Hitler. When Germany was down to dumps, he had the answer to bring Germany back to greatness. And people rallied around him and they were fascinated by him because he had this power. There's a restaurant in Los Angeles that has been kindly referred to as the Sushi Dictator. Because when you walk in, you can't order anything and you can't make any requests or special anything. You know, the, the, the chef just gives you your food and you can't complain about it or you can show the door, but he's fascinating and people still buy things from him. Another really powerful trigger for fascination is mystique. Things that are mysterious, things that people don't know things about, I mean, they're very mysterious and people want to discover them. They're fascinating. You know, anything that is unknown to us, we want to learn about. One of the greatest examples is the Jägermeister drink. Nobody knows what's in Jägermeister because it's made in Germany. The FDA has no authority to ask what the ingredients are, so we don't know. But people still rally around and drink it even though it tastes like kerosene because it's mysterious and it's fascinating. Now, the alarm trigger, this is me making this PowerPoint presentation five minutes before the deadline. The alarm trigger is super fascinating because it gets us to do things that we wouldn't normally do. When you have two weeks before a project, you're not actually going to do it. When that alarm trigger, that deadline starts pulling at you, you're going to work on it. And that's why we stay up all night and do all-nighters and drink tons of coffee because we are fascinated by deadlines for some reason. You know, it just gets us to work and it gets us productive and it gets our brains flowing and it works out. So, <clears throat> another really powerful force in, of fascination is trust. So, when somebody is old or wise or has a lot of experience, we feel like we can trust them and they become fascinating in that respect. And um, one of the greatest examples that I thought of when I was making this speech of trust is Billy Crystal in The Princess Bride when he says, you know, Sonny, true love is the greatest thing in the world. He's this old guy who's been with his wife for a long time. And it may not make perfect sense, but you know, when I was thinking of it, it worked out for me. So we trust him. They're fascinated by that. But then there are times when we want to rebel. So when we hear six reasons bacon is better than true love, we're going to click on that link because the rebellion trigger is getting us to go away from that trusted, you know, tried and true information and get to the rebellion trigger. And, you know, back, back to Jägermeister, Jägermeister is something that triggers the rebellion trigger because it's not really thought of as a drink that tastes good or is that acceptable, but it's still fascinating for people because of its nature. There are a lot of people who combine these fascination triggers, like the, the prestige trigger and the mystique, the mystique trigger are both things that Lady Gaga has used to great effect to bring fascination about her brand and her music and her personality. Another person that I think is really, really fascinating is Sally Hogshead, who is maybe not known to you, but to me, she's um, really fascinating because she's one of the world's foremost experts on this phenomenon of fascination and the triggers that get us to be fascinated with people. She actually wrote a book called Aptly Fascinating, which is all about these seven triggers that bring about fascination into concepts or ideas or businesses of people. So if you're interested in this concept and want to learn more, check out the book. I'm reading right now, it's great. And that's my talk.